Hello, this is PhotoWalkthrough.com, Tutorial 6, Chapter 4, and this will be the final chapter in our recap of most of the ground we covered in Tutorial 1. Well, I am back from my holiday cruising on the QE2, and we had an absolutely wonderful time. We visited Bilbao in Spain, La Rochelle in France, and St. Peterport in Guernsey, and aside from the first day at sea where it was very foggy, we had wonderful weather throughout. I've got a whole mountain of images to process, and for any of, the, uh, any of you that are interested, I'll be releasing a few of those at a time onto my Flickr stream in the coming days and weeks. Uh, they'll be in the QE2 group, and I'll try to add a link to the show notes. Uh, and that brings me on to another announcement. I'm currently having a big problem with the photowalkthrough.com website. I'm using WordPress for my blog, which drives the podcast feed, and yesterday it stopped working for no apparent reason. I've got no idea why, and I've tried really hard to get the site back working, but with no luck so far. I'm now moving the site to a new server in the hope that that will fix it, but it'll mean repointing the DNS, and that might take a day or so to come back. So please don't panic if the website and possibly the feed vanish. It will be back just as soon as I can get the files and the DNS and the database moved over, and I'm very sorry for the downtime. So today I'm going to finish off this image uh, with a little more contrast work and some final lightning and burning. And uh, right now, um, this is the final version you're looking at here. Um, let me go to the version we're working on. Here's the version we're working on. Um, right now it's looking very grey, as you can see. And, uh, and that's what I'm looking for at this stage. What I've been trying to do is even out all the light and dark areas a little bit so that there's not such a strong contrast between lights and darks. And uh, that means that if I do that, when I add contrast at the final stage, it will bring out, hopefully, some beautiful detail in all the areas of the image. So, um, so let's begin just by adding in the contrast and see where it takes us. Uh, and once again, you can see I'm viewing this without the, without the, the, bars, uh, the button bars. If you press the tab key, you can make those, those um, windows appear and disappear. Nice way to view the image um, without anything cluttering it up and getting in the way. So, um, oh, one other thing. Um, I've had a couple of requests in emails, um, and I, I really love it when people email in with suggestions, by the way. Um, a couple of people have suggested that I use probably too many keystrokes, and I, I could spend more time showing you how to get to some of these things through menus. So in future, I will try and show you how to do the things I'm describing in the menus as well, assuming I can remember how to do it myself, because I use the keystrokes so much now. But um, I'll start off. Um, what I'm going to do for a contrast layer, we're going to add contrast to this image. So let's just make that so you can see it. Um, and I'm going to, under layer, I'm going to do new adjustment layer curves. And that does exactly the same as using this button here, which is the new adjustment layer button. And th that's the way I normally show you how to do it, but I'm going to do it this way today. And this is going to be a contrast layer. And the way we make it a contrast layer is in our blending mode, we choose overlay. And I'm going to press OK on that, and you can see straight away that's increased the contrast in that in that image. Um, now it's popped up this window, which appeared on the other screen. Um, I'm not going to do anything to this to this curve. I'm just going to press OK on it. So we've now got our new contrast layer, which I will drag to 50% opacity because that's where I usually start. Um, and then, as I said before, you can drag it up and down just to see whether or not you want more or less. It's useful when you're creating action hotkeys um, to have these layers come in at 50%, and that gives you some leeway both ways to, to increase or decrease the effect of the, of the layer. Um, now, in this case, 50% on that contrast layer is not nearly enough. Um, I think that can quite safely go to 100%. And in actual fact, I think just looking at that, I, I may even want a little bit more contrast. Um, I think normally I would probably add this later on, but I know this image because I've, this is not the first time I've done this process. So I, I know that I'm going to want a little bit more contrast than that. Now the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to duplicate this contrast layer, and I'm going to do that by clicking on the contrast layer in the layers palette here, and just dragging it down to the new layer icon here, and that duplicates the layer. And as you can see, that's greatly increased the contrast. Now that really is way too much. It's starting to look like a newspaper image. So I'm just going to click on the opacity slider here. Now, I've mentioned this before, but um, if you click on the word next to opacity, you get this little scrubby slider. I don't know if you can see the pointer's got a little hand with an arrow pointing the other way. If you click on that and drag left and right, it's just a, a quicker and easier way of 
of dragging those sliders around then popping into there and grabbing hold of that so I use those scrubby sliders all the time and they are in most places in Photoshop not everywhere but almost everywhere you can find those scrubby sliders so um, I think probably that's about the right amount of contrast for now and what I'm going to do now um, if you zoom in if we just zoom in a little oops if we just zoom in a little on these boats they're starting to get a little bit dark again we've done a little bit of work on them in the past just to make sure that we keep detail on the boats but this contrast is a fairly heavy contrast layer we're adding so uh, I don't want to lose too much detail on the boats because that is really the main subject in the image and so what I'm going to do um, I'm going to mask the, the contrast layer out a little bit on those boats but rather than you can see we've got two contrast layers because we duplicated it and each contrast layer has got its own layer mask which is this thing to the right here um, under, under my cursor so I don't want to do two layer masks what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to drag if I'm going to click on that layer mask drag it down to the trash can icon there and that will say do I want to delete the layer mask yes I do and I'm going to do the same on the other one drag that down to the trash can icon yes I want to delete that one as well let me just drag this layers palette larger and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to group these two layers together and I'm going to put a layer mask on the group instead of on each individual layer so the way I do that is you click on one layer then you hold down the shift key and click on the other and that now you can see both layers are selected and you can group those by going to layer group layers or as you saw in the layer in the, uh, the window there control G will do the same thing I'm going to just double click on the name there and just name the group contrast now the way I add a layer mask to that group is by clicking the add layer mask button down here at the bottom of the layers palette and as you can see that's created a new layer mask on the group if I open that group that uh, grouped set of layers up you can see that the two contrast layers underneath still don't have their own layer mask but we do have a group layer mask which will apply to all of the layers inside the group so I can Let's make that smaller again and this time I'm going to just zoom in on the boats I'm going to grab my brush tool which is this one here remember I can get to it by pressing B zoom in just a little bit more and on my contrast layer mask remember white reveals black conceals so at the moment the layer mask is completely white it's revealing all of the contrast uh, edit on the entire image so what I'm going to do is I want to hide some of that contrast work on these boats just to reduce the contrast a little bit on them by painting black on the layer mask just to conceal the contrast change so I don't, I don't want to do this very much because I do still want the, the boats to look like they fit in with the image but as, I, as you can see what I'm doing is just painting in particularly on the light areas because I want to just make sure that they've not gone too dark and I'm just hitting the X key every now and then to switch between black and white in my color palette here down uh, sorry my selected colors down here and black will remove the contrast and white will reveal it again oh that was too much there we go okay I think that's uh, probably not so much on that boat just at the side there that boat's not really a big part of the image so I'm just not going to I'm going to pretend it's not there when it comes to my editing and then we've just got a little bit of slightly strange glow on that boat there so I'm just going to just I'm painting white to bring back some of the darker areas on that boat and then a little bit of black just to to hide some of that contrast work right let's see how that looks that looks pretty good so if I remember you can shift click on a layer mask so if I'm holding down the shift key and I click on the layer mask that turns off the layer mask so that's the that's the layer that's as if that was a completely white layer mask revealing the entire contrast edit and if I press shift click again and turn back on the layer mask you can see that we're just bringing the boats back up a little because there they look a little bit dark and there they're, they're looking more like one of the lighter subjects of the image so next I think we'll probably do it has gone a little bit dark overall um, and one of the things I'm noticing is that we've got a bit of a halo here just underneath that the edge of that cloud there 
So I think what I'm going to do, I think that's probably mostly hard light. So I'm going to go back to our hard light layer here. And I'm going to grab the eraser tool, oh, which I've got set very large at the moment. I'm just going to zoom in on that area there. And I'm just going to carefully just erase underneath that edge. I like that we've got a darker edge around it, but I didn't like so much that we had a sort of a darker halo on the inside of it. But I'm also looking here, and I can see just the shadow of some detail there that could be brought out. So again, painting black on my hard light layer mask just to bring in some burning. Sorry, not layer mask, it's black on my hard light layer. There's no layer mask on this layer. Um, and I've, you can see I've, I've created a little halo there, and I've created a little halo there, which I'm just going to grab the eraser tool and just take off a little bit. Uh, I think that looks a little bit, a little bit more like the light is breaking through the clouds. I think when you when you're doing these edits, you've got to try and decide where you want the edges of the clouds to be. You've got to try and decide where the light is is coming from, where you want it to appear to come from. Um, and obviously, if you if you're trying to be as faithful as you can to the original scene, where indeed the light really was coming from. So uh, in this case, I know that the, the light was coming through here and a little bit through here. So I want those areas to be bright with the sun, which is just behind the clouds there. Right, so next of all, I'm going to do a lightning layer. And this is going to be um, across the entire image. So once again, layer, new adjustment layer, curves. And this will be a lightning layer. Um, this is just a name, by the way. This doesn't make it become a lightning layer. What makes it become a lightning layer is that I set the blending mode to screen. And I can set the opacity to 50% here, ready, if I want to. Remember, I use scrubby sliders here as well. And I press OK on that. The curves window appears. Just press OK on that. And if I turn that layer on and off, just by clicking the little eyeball there, you can see that lightens the layer quite considerably. Um, that's the entire layer lightened there. Now, I think probably just looking at this I'm seeing quite a lot of lightness down down here on the sand just next to the sea um, just kind of gently uh, sorry I leapt into doing that without showing what I was doing um, these these layers these adjustment layers always come with their own layer mask so the layer mask is what's selected by default when you've just created the layer so I'm, with the layer mask selected I just grabbed a brush chose black as my foreground color oops chose black as my foreground color by pressing D and then X if necessary to get black to the front. And I'm just painting black on the layer mask just to dim down those those slightly brighter areas that I don't want to lose too much detail on. So just a little bit there. Making the brush a little bigger with the um, square bracket keys. Um, I do apologize. I know they're not square bracket keys on some of your European keyboards. If anybody wants to write in and tell me what keys you use to change your brush size on a European keyboard, I'll be very happy to, to mention it in my future show. On the British and American keyboards, it is the square bracket keys. Right, let's just darken that down a little bit as well. I'm just trying to guide the eyes more. What, the place I want the eyes to rest here, I, obviously I've got the eyes to sort of start at the brightest point and follow these rays down to the boats. And then hopefully this, this little shape here is also leading the eye into the image. So I kind of want the eye to settle around here somewhere. And what I'm doing, um, because we've got a very light area in this corner of the sky here, I don't want that to be so light that it leads the eye out of the picture. So I'm just going to where I'm lightening, I'm selecting where I'm lightening just by painting black on those areas that I don't want to lighten on the layer mask. So I've just darkened that down in the top left. And if I just turn on and off that layer mask, once again, shift click on the layer mask, you can see that that, that corner there, that would be without the layer mask, that's with the layer mask. Just bringing it all back into, into sort of similar levels of brightness again. And I think possibly the final step here I'm going to do another lightning layer. So layer, new adjustment layer, curves, and then lighten ground. And once again, it'll be screen. 
And once again, I'll bring it in at 50%. Press OK, and I'm just happy with that as it was. And finally, I'm going to use the gradient tool, which is this tool here. You can get to it by pressing G. And I'm going to choose, oops, I'm going to click the gradient tool again, and I'm going to choose, ah, that was me confusing myself. The gradient editor turned up on the wrong side, on the wrong screen there. So uh, when you, uh, I went too fast. Choose the gradient tool, and you can see what gradient we're choosing here. We've got straight line gradients, circular gradients, we've got conical gradients, and all sorts of things. We want a straight line gradient. And if you click on the gradient here, which at the moment is going from black to transparent, and checkerboard is transparent, remember. If you click on that, it brings up this gradient editor. And in this case, what I would like is black to white, which is just foreground to background in this case. Or there is actually a black to white, which is the third one along. So I want black to white. And that's going to be, so where I start is at the left of the gradient, and where I end is at the right of the gradient. So I'm going to start when I draw this gradient. It's going to be black at the beginning of my line and white at the end of my line, and it's going to be a graduated gray in between. So what I want is just to lighten the ground here. So I'm going to hold down the shift key so that I get straight lines. I'm going to click and drag down above the ground and end below the ground. Sorry, above the horizon and end below the horizon. And that if you look at the layer mask, it gives us this. I'm going to alt click on the layer mask just so you can see the layer mask. Black at the top, graduated grey through the middle, white at the bottom, and that makes our layer mask conceal the lightning in the sky and reveal the lightning in the ground. And now if I just turn that on and off, I think you'll agree that we've got similar sorts of tones in the sky and the ground. And I think just for a final touch, um, I get accused of doing this too much, but I do it quite unashamedly because I like it. I'm going to add a little bit of vignetting in the corners. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to add yet another adjustment layer. And following my, my practice of keeping the bitmap layers further down the, down the list of layers as, as much as possible, um, is if, if possible, uh, I'd try and put it you know, just above the background or just above the, the spot edits or the sharpening or, or whatever layers you've got down here. I like to have adjustment layers at the top and bitmap layers at the bottom because I find that if you do that, the adjustment layers seem to um, cause less in the way of posterization. Um, it's just a sort of a something I've learned through practice. So down here at the spot edit level, spot edit level I'm going to make a new uh, a new layer, which is layer, new layer, and this is going to be a vignette layer. Oh, and I forgot to set the blending mode. I want the blending mode to be, I think in this case I'll try a soft light and see if it works. And the way I do my vignettes is with that vignette layer, it's, at the moment it's just a plain bitmap layer with nothing in it. It's checkerboard, means it's transparent. Um, if you press D and Get yourself a um, black as your foreground colour. Uh, Alt delete or Option delete on a Mac will fill that with. Oops. Uh, Option delete on a Mac, Alt delete on a PC will fill that with the foreground colour. Um, you can fill with the background colour by doing Control delete on a PC or Command delete on a Mac. So I've just done an Option delete because I want to fill with the foreground colour. That's filled that vignette layer with black, and I'm going to grab the eraser tool, which I press E to get, but it's this button here. Make my eraser as big as possible with those square bracket keys, and then I'm just going to erase the middle bit. Now, this it's really important that you've got a very soft, fuzzy edged brush for this, because obviously it's not going to look good if you've got a very hard edged brush. Um, and I'm, you can see I went right out to the corners there. If you look at just that layer, I've just alt clicked on the little eyeball next to the layer just to show me just that one layer. You can see it's quite a subtle little vignette in the corners there. Alt click to bring it back. And now if I just shift, uh, if I just plain old click on that, you can see the effect it's got. It just brings those corners in. Now that probably is actually quite strong. I might even back that off a little bit. I thought I might go for hard light on this, but I think soft light's fine. I'm just going to back that off to somewhere there. Let me just drag it all the way down and all the way up. Yeah, it needs to be around about 50% in this case. Just, I just 
quickly there looked at both ends of the spectrum and decided about how far through I wanted it. Um, so that's it. That's my vignette layer. That's usually where I, I end these things. And in this case, that's where I, I'm going to end this particular image. Um, not quite the same as the original version I did of that. Let, let me just quickly show you the, the version I did first of that. You can see actually the sky, I think, in my real version of this is a little better. Um, I think the contrast in my newer version is probably better. Yeah, that's the real version. I might just, while I've got you here, I might just drag that contrast up just a tiny bit more on the original. There. Maybe there. That's with the that's with more contrast. That's as it was to start with. I've got more detail in the sky in this original version, and that really is just a question of the amount of time I was able to spend with it. Um, obviously, in the videos, I try and keep it as short as I can. Um, anyway, I'm going to call it a day there. I'm going to go back to trying to fix the website, and with any luck, um, you'll find this show this week. If the feed goes off and you aren't able to get this show until uh, next week or something like that, I do apologize, but I am trying really hard to get the website back as soon as is humanly possible. Um, in the meantime, I look forward to seeing you on the Flickr group. Oh, and don't forget, it's the beginning of a new month. We ended last month, I think, um, about number four in the Podcast Alley top ten video podcasts list. Um, we were right up there with uh, Tiki Bar TV, Rumor Girls, um, a couple of other really, really well-known podcasts. Um, I know there are definitely less subscribers to this podcast than those, um, and I can only guess that means that if we're getting that many votes, it's because you guys are absolutely fantastic. So please, please, if you've been voting for us in the past, do vote for us again on Podcast Alley. It really does help raise the visibility. It does bring people listening to the show, and the more listeners we get, the more viewers we get, um, the more we can do. Um, the more we can afford to do, the competitions we can run and things like that. So please do get your friends to join in, vote for us, tell people about the show. If you run any other photography related uh, forums, please post there. Let people know, get the word out. Um, we took a really big leap in subscribers this month. Uh, I think possibly our subscriber base more than doubled over the period of the month. It, it almost doubled over the period of the last two weeks. So I don't know what's going on, but you guys are really helping push the show. Thank you very much, and I will be back next week with a new tutorial based, I think, on what you've been voting for on our homepage to tell me which image you'd like to see next. So I will see you in the next show.